I think it's a good rule. I don't think all the rules that the league has put in have been positive for the game, but I think that one has been. Here's a throw over the middle behind McDonald, and he can't make the catch. And then gets dropped by Frank Walker. And we look ahead to this weekend's game, and you look at John Kidna, and something strikes you. Well, you know, you can just see the frustration. I mean, having been there, I, I know what that feels like. And and when you, you know, when you're as competitive as what John Kidna is, and and Mike Martz loves John Kidna. He told me yesterday that he wished it, he wished he had had the opportunity to coach him right from the beginning. He, he likes his mind, and you can tell right now that Kidna is just very frustrated with what's happened. Here's a pass complete to Furry, and he is chucked out of bounds. Now incomplete. A bobble before Furry went out, and Mike doesn't argue at all. So it's third and ten. Yeah, I mean, this is a tough, it's it's not a hard catch, but it's then difficult to hang on to the ball with contact, and he didn't catch it clean. And so as the ball's moving, as he's going to the ground, he's got to maintain possession, and he never had possession to begin with. You know, and Mike Furry, a guy who you know last year had 98 receptions led the team with 98 receptions and this year he's their fourth wide receiver and has never complained I mean you talk about a guy who has every reason to be frustrated third down and ten Kitten is not going to make it tripped up by Campman what a game Aaron Campman has had here's the bigger picture and to frustration today that may be. But the big picture for the Lions is not good. When you consider what their schedule looks like the rest of the way, which you touched on earlier, and then you realize that they're 0-4 against the other teams they're in a fight with for a potential wild card spot, they're in trouble. Kitten is flushed out, throws, completes. It depends on the spot. They're not going to give forward progress to Johnson initially. Now they move it back. And if you believe that red line, which is unofficial, initially when the referee or the official came in, looked to be about a yard shy. Now they move it forward, and Johnson may have it. Again, Campman got pressure on John Kitten, and we take another look at the completion. And it looked like he was past the marker. But again, it's up to the official and where he spots the football with 10.55 left. And any hopes that the Lions have are clinging to the nose of the football here being enough for a first down, it is. Yeah, Troy, it's Campman again. I mean, you said this guy doesn't take a playoff. He didn't take the last playoff either. You know, he's, he's, he's had such a remarkable career coming into the league. And, and when he first got here to Green Bay, you know he just played sparingly and then over the years I think he just showed the coaches that hey I deserve more playing time and he's gotten it and he he's he's one of those guys that I know that I would have loved to have had as a teammate because you love guys that go out and compete like that every play. Kitna fires Roy Williams makes the catch and is down to the five and a penalty flag comes in on the tackle. Al Harris made the play defensively. And Roy Williams is up celebrating. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask, defense, number 31, half the distance to the goal, first down. Yeah, that's on Al Harris as he's coming in to make the tackle. Good call there by the referee, completely turns him around. You're right, Joe. Roy Williams, he, he got up and gave his signature move after a completion. I don't know that I'd be celebrating quite like that with the score what it is. Green Bay takes a timeout defensively. It's a 22 point game. So, any chance the Lions want to have as we go through the rest of the day, they've got to punch it into the end zone for the first time. Live NHL continues on NASN with an exclusive doubleheader. First up, the Leafs head into the desert to face Wayne Gretzky's Coyotes. Then Edmonton face off against Chicago's hotshot rookies, Kane and Taves. A live Hockey Night in Canada doubleheader this Saturday only on NASN. There are 380,000 NCAA student-athletes. 
And most of us, and most of will, us go will go pro in something, in something other, other than, than sports. sports. In something other than sports. Go to ncaastudent.org to find out how. The hard-hitting action of American football continues on NASN, the home of the NFL. And this week, we have another chance to watch one of the great teams in NFL history. Live Sunday night, Tom Brady leads the Patriots when they face the Philadelphia Eagles. Then on Monday night, the Miami Dolphins head to Pittsburgh to take on the first place Pittsburgh Steelers. Eagles, Patriots, live Sunday night. Dolphins, Steelers, live Monday night. The NFL on NASN. faces of the defensive players for the Lions they say it all as that defense has been turned around and picked apart by the Green Bay offense so far today they put up 34 points meanwhile for Detroit they're inside Green Bay territory for the eighth time in ten possessions but they have not scored a touchdown and they go backward on this play coming through to make the play on Kevin Jones was Michael Montgomery Second and goal. Well, Michael Montgomery, he just shot the middle right there and was able to get to Jones before he ever even got close to the line of scrimmage. I mean, the one thing that absolutely kills you down here in this area is penetration by the defensive front. Into the end zone, the pass is caught for the touchdown, Calvin Johnson. Fourth touchdown in this rookie season for number 81. That was a good throw there by John Kidna. There were two defenders that looked like they had a chance to be able to make a play on the ball. I mean, it was it was not an easy throw for John Kidna to get that one in there. He just put it up high and just, just beyond the arms there. And Calvin Johnson, because of his size, I mean, it allows you to do that. You can put the ball in places with him and Roy Williams that you just can't do with most wide receivers. Just under 10 to play. Penalty flags come flying as Hanson hits the extra point. Jared Bush came across. It's a 15 point game and it looks like that was indeed against Green Bay and they'll assess the penalty on the kickoff Off sides defense number 24 penalty will be enforced on the kickoff great message on this Thanksgiving as Kitna finally gets it into the end zone into the hands of Calvin Johnson it's a 15 point Green Bay lead. Live NHL continues on NASN with an exclusive doubleheader. It's another chapter in the most storied rivalry in all of hockey as the Canadians battle the Leafs. Then the Stanley Cup champion Ducks travel to Vancouver for a Western Conference matchup. A live NHL doubleheader this Tuesday only on NASN. There was a moment there where I thought that was a pretty doggone good throw. I, I can probably play. My sophomore year against Thomasville, I only got three balls. And those three went for 144 yards and two touchdowns. I knew right then that I was on my way. And the stadium was rocking. It was packed. Got a total of 400 some yards. That's when I knew. When people stopped calling me Archie's boy, started calling me Peyton. That was a big moment for me. There is a land full of mysterious creatures and sirens of great beauty where bands of men meet in fantastical arenas to do battle not only with each other but with gravity itself and fight for eternal glory. Coming to an NASN screen near you, the land of hoops and dreams starts this Saturday. Little boy 
he would love to have every year he would always say is it time for thanksgiving because he wanted the whole family over because we always have the whole family at our house and every thanksgiving he would ride a horse he says the horse threw him off don't know which way the horse went we all have to go down and get the horse for him but it was a good thanksgiving because we were together as a family Roy Williams' mom on this Thanksgiving. Roy, a part of that last drive, which finally got the Lions into the end zone. And now Hanson, who doesn't need any help, will kick it from the 35. Already has a touchback today. Odds are he'll have another. If he hits it well. Instead, from about the one, it's Corin Robinson. And Robinson can't make the 20, but Simmons on the tackle and an 18 yard return. So the Green Bay Packers will try and hang on here in Detroit. And you look at the day for Brett Favre 20 straight completions today, which is a team record, so it's a Favre record. At the bottom, after tying Dan Marino last week, now the 63rd career three touchdown day, the quarterback rating is through the roof again for the fifth straight week. And it starts up front. We haven't talked much about this offensive line, which has had to move guys around all season long, but they've done a nice job against a pretty good defensive front from the Lions. Farge quarterback rating 133.9 as he hands to Ryan Grant. He picks up a yard. You know, you mentioned that offensive line, Joe, and 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 I think that you know also deserving of getting recognized is the offensive line coach, James Campen. And, you know in order to to have guys go down the way that they have for the Green Bay Packers and to continue to, to move the football and score points and protect Brett Favre and let him throw the ball and you know granted it hasn't always been pretty but you know that group now this was the third game that that offensive line has started with the same group that started week one and so now they've got their group back together and you can tell that they're playing better right now than they have at previous times. Grant over the right side. A nice run on second down. Picks up seven. Mark Tauscher's been bothered by a bad ankle. We saw him limp earlier, and as we play here in the fourth quarter, Tony Maul is in there at right tackle. His driver gets up limp limping. Got hurt on that last carry. It's third down and two. You know, Donald Driver always does such a good job of blocking, and then there's mm. there's what you always see, and that's what you always worry about. And that's why you always see a lot of wide receivers when they're engaged and when the running back and other people get around them, they, they get away as quickly as they can because they don't want those bodies coming across the back of their legs. Third down and two. Favre down the sideline and incomplete. Good positioning by Fernando Bryant. Pass intended for James Jones. It's fourth down. You know, we saw Donald Driver walking off, and then, of course, Charles Woodson. And if the Packers, if they're able to go on and win this game, I mean, they, they set themselves up in a, for a great showdown next Thursday night in Dallas against the Cowboys, who will be playing later this afternoon. And, you know, gosh, you go into such a meaningful game like that, and if you're without some of these key players, you know, that could really impact the outcome of that one. Troy Walters with the fair catch. Yeah, you see Driver limp off. We've seen Charles Woodson leave the game. And a look inside our truck. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. So many away from their families. <laughs> That's that story. Watch all the top teams playing in the biggest games in the best North American sports leagues all year round, only on NASN. See the Super Bowl, the World Series, the Stanley Cup Finals, College Football's Bowl Championship Series, March Madness, the Arena Bowl, the Grey Cup, and the NASCAR Bush Series. Plus, enjoy a packed schedule of regular season action, playoff games, and leading sports programming. NASN is your home for North American sports. Log on to NASN.com for information. Xgames.com. Our tape room, the very best in the business. There's young Derek Manning right in the <laughs> middle of it all. Mookie. Right on down the line. Lars was in there. Victor, here's a pass to Roy Williams, and he cannot shake the tackle of Nick Barnett in a gain of five. Under eight to play, and it's a 15-point game. 
you, know, you show Nick Barnett there and and I really like what he's been able to do this year for this team and you know the games that we've had a chance to watch of theirs he, he you know covering a guy like Roy Williams not easy to do more pressure on Kidna avoids the rush for a moment and now just gets rid of it pressure by Colin Jenkins this good defensive front for Green Bay. They're very deep. They're playing without Johnny Jolly, who sprained his shoulder, but they are able to fill in. And Colin Cole, who's been inactive for the last six games, has showed up today and played very well. And he hasn't been alone. It's been a good effort up front. Yeah, and that's probably the one area of this team that they could absorb a loss like Johnny Jolly because they do have a lot of depth there along that defensive front. You know, it's the other guys. It's a Donald Driver and the Charles Woodson's you start worrying about as you go into next week. Third down and five. And the pass is caught somehow. Got it into Calvin Johnson. What a good throw by Kitna. There was three guys there, and, and it looked like it was not going to be able to get through and then into the hands of Calvin Johnson. And, you know, again, we talked about the back of Calvin Johnson and how he's had that injury and he lands right on it and that's one of the reasons why he hasn't gotten to play more every time they thought he was healthy he was landing on his back just like that over the middle it's Johnson again to the 30 and that back takes another hit Charlie Pepper on yeah. the stop and, and it looks like he's in a little bit of pain Joe I mean coming into the game probably a little less than 100 percent and he has fallen a number of times and taken hits to that area did not have a good first half he has stepped it up here in the second half to be sure this is going to be pass interference as McDonald was interfered with by Big B Well, as you're going to see, McDonald here, he's going across, and Bigby bumps him right there. You know, just enough. Now, I don't know whether or not McDonald would have been able to get to that ball, but there was an official standing right there that, that threw the flag. Interference, defense, number 20. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. You know, you get a touchdown here, and, and then all of a sudden you put the pressure right squarely on the back of the Green Bay Packers and then they have to do something again offensively because now it would be it would then become a one possession game. That's what they're one yard away from right now. First and goal from the one. Kevin Jones will make it. Touchdown Lions and they have some life. Touchdown number six for Kevin Jones and now a different look on the face of Brett Favre. Those smiles are gone as this has become a game again. Yeah, and, and it was because they were finally able to get some big plays in the passing game that got him in a position then to come away with this touchdown. Flags again on the extra point. And it's again against Green Bay. It's an eight point game. You know, it's an eight point game. And offside, defense, number 57. Penalty will be enforced on a kickoff. Kick is good. You know, at some point, they, they, if they do score a touchdown the next time, if they get a touchdown, they're going to have to go for two points. With that penalty, it would have moved them half the distance to the goal line. They could have considered going for the two there, but then if they don't make it, then it's a, a two possession game. So, you know, a good decision by Rod Marinelli not going for two there and knowing that it's a one possession game now. One possession and certainly a hard hitting game to this point on Thanksgiving. for the Lions here in Detroit and they really need this game if they can somehow figure out a way to come back and beat the Packers as we mentioned 
a Detroit team that next will be at Minnesota then at home against Dallas at San Diego at home against Kansas City at Green Bay their last five games last 14 points scored by the Lions this time Hansen gets into it and Corin Robinson will take a knee So in what has been another big day for this Packers offense and in particular Brett Favre really spreading the ball around the guy on the end of that graphic Donald Driver will check and see if he's able to continue in this game limped off the field the last time the Packers had the ball and right now not in the offensive huddle. Second and ten as Corey Hall can't make the connection. We talked to Favre about the noise in here, and he said, when we played well, we've been able to take the crowd out of the game. When we haven't, this place is as noisy as it is for the Packers to deal with when they play the Vikings. Well, they had them out of the game early, but they're back in it now. And I know Favre is frustrated about that last pass. They go empty set. He had to throw it. He had Corey Hall. And, and he didn't complete it, and more importantly, he stopped the clock. Quick setup and throw, and it's Greg Jennings. And Jennings is able to reach forward for an 11 yard gain and a big first down. And we've seen the Packers, and we see it each and every week from them. They, they, they do throw a lot of the slant routes, and you're going to see Smith, he jumps to the outside. And I know in talking with Rod Marinelli, I asked him, are you going to play inside technique with your corners to try to take away the slant route that the Packers like to run so much but yet they haven't played inside technique and the Packer receivers have gotten inside on that route five wide receivers including Donald Driver. So back on the field is Driver a little pump fake from far penalty flag on the play completion to Corin Robinson and Robinson runs out of bounds at the 45 yard line but this play looks like it's coming back anyway. Holding offense number 75 10 yard penalty first down. That's Tony Maul is playing in place of Mark Tauscher out at right tackle. You take a look yeah with the inside. You know you're expecting as a tackle for that defensive end you want him to rush to the outside he fooled them and he came inside and whenever you see offensive linemen particularly tackles whenever they hold it's because their feet got lazy and they were out of position and then you just grab out of it out of instinct. There's Tauscher on the sideline the word from the bench is coach's decision. But we have seen him limping around and he's been dealing with a bad ankle Ryan Grant. Lowers his head and keeps on going. There's no doubt they have found their back in Ryan Grant, who's making his fourth consecutive start. Paris Lennon on that tackle a game of 12. I tell you, that was a great run there by Ryan Grant. And see how he finishes this at the very end. I mean, Fernando Bryant is a pretty good tackler. I mean, he's a physical corner. I guess as physical as what corners can be. And Ryan Grant just ran right over the top of him. And whenever you see the arm straight running off like that, that right arm. He's got a burner. Second and eight. Driver with a catch. And as he ducks down, he picks up another Green Bay first down. By the way, don't forget, the Lions had to take two timeouts on defense. So they only have one timeout remaining in this game. Well, Kanoi Kennedy is unable to make the tackle. He's in a great position. Donald Driver gets the reception. And then you got to come up and you got to make a play. And not only does he not make the tackle, but then they allow Driver to get the first down. I mean, for Green Bay to overcome what they overcame with the penalty and now have first down and keep this clock running, an impressive job by them. Under four to play. 
play action. They want to put it up again. And the pass to Jones caught down inside the 40. Conventional thought would be that the Packers will run it. They play action and Favre completes another 20 yard pass. What I like about this one is Favre throws it away from danger. He throws it to the outside. And so as you can see Travis Fisher he can't then get to the ball because if it's to the inside maybe he can make a play but because Favre threw it to the outside to Jones there's no way he could get there a good throw and a very safe throw under three and a half to go it's the tight end Lee who's been quiet today in motion and delay a game delay of game offense five yard penalty first down Atypical of Favre to let that play clock expire and cost the Packers five yards. It's first and 15. The AT&T postgame show is coming up. See who walks away with the galloping gobbler. Plus Kurt, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy. Chat about what's in store for Sunday's show, which will be a big one. As Boss Bailey comes back onto the field on first and 15. Green Bay puts it on the ground and it's Ryan Grant with room to run. Grant dragged down by Fisher but a huge run of 26 yards. This guy's got some real cutback ability. That's about the third time now today we've seen him start one side and then cut back. You're going to see him get through the hole but then off of the block there in the middle by Scott Wells the center he cuts back to his right. And about the only thing that he didn't do well there was stay in bounds. Donald Lee, the tight end, does a good job of securing that edge for him. Now the Packers are in a spot as Grant carries it where they can run plays, run down the clock. Detroit with only one timeout left, and all Green Bay needs is a field goal to in essence put this game out of reach barring the unexpected in the last minute. Yeah what they'd like to do is just run this clock out. You know what Rod Marinelli is going to do is let them run one more play and then call the timeout and then he will also then be able to have the two minute warning. So the clock will stop twice. But more than likely if they do get the ball back it's going to be a two possession game. A 100 yard day for Ryan Grant. Second time he's been to that level the last three weeks. Grant trying to add to it. Brought down, it looked like just short of first down yardage. And the clock will continue to wind down as the Lions let it go to the two minute warning. We'll come back and see how far away the Packers are from a first down. Two minutes left in Detroit on Thanksgiving. This season, NASN brings you more live college football action than ever before. Start your weekend off with the guys on ESPN's College Game Day Live as the crew broadcasts from a different college campus each week and leads you into up to three live football games each Saturday. Chill out on Sundays with more first-run games and catch up on all the weekend scores and highlights on College Football Final. And when things really start heating up, we've got top conference championship games and all the major bowl games live, including every BCS game and the national championship live from New Orleans. And if that's not enough, we bring you special midweek live games from ESPN and all the latest news, previews, and predictions every weekday with College Football Live, a 30-minute wrap-up show to keep you up to date. NASN is your only place to see all this great college football action. Log on to NASN.com for the latest schedules and information. Two minutes left in this game. Green Bay could put it away here with a first down. It's third down and one. Detroit with only one timeout remaining. They didn't take it right before the two minute warning. And off is to Grant. He's wrapped up in the backfield. Corey Redding made the play and now 
It's fourth down, a field goal. Will be coming as Detroit spends their final timeout. Field goal attempt by the rookie Mason Crosby. And he would make it an 11 point game with a very short field goal here. More of our crew guys in this Thanksgiving. Larry Meyer with a royal wave. Freddie Aldis, Uncle Fred. Thanksgiving, everybody. Our audio mixer. And more of our truck. It's building the anticipation. Oh, we're saving the best for last, I guess. Our producer and director. <laughs> Is that really the best? 26 yard <laughs> attempt by Mason Crosby to make it an 11 point game. And that should just about do it. An 11 point lead for Green Bay, and Brett Favre can exhale again as the Packers are a minute 44 away from a 10 and 1 start. And for the aforementioned producer and director, our producer Richie Zients and our director, and I know he's going to talk, Artie Kempner. Thanks very much, Joe. Just want to wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving. This is our producer, Richie Zients, down here over here. Uh, a warm Thanksgiving wish to all of our crew members, families, the folks in Easton, Maryland today, and Virginia, the Zionses, New York, and Delaware. And let's throw it back upstairs to Joe. Thank you very much. That, everything was outstanding except when you throw it back, you gotta, your voice has to trail off a little bit. Then I know it's my turn to talk. Good job, Artie and Richie and everybody. So many that are with us here today in Detroit. And by the way, Artie forgot to wish his dad a happy birthday. So happy birthday, Mr. Kempner. And after a quick turnaround after a game on Sunday, we were in Dallas. Here we are in Detroit on a Thursday Thanksgiving. We're joined in our booth by our editorial consultant Steve Horn, who does a great job for us here and certainly for me, baseball and football. Dave Schwalbe, our spotter, and Ed Spida, our statistician, Philadelphia Zone. And out to the 26 is Kaysen, a 19 yard return. And here's that playoff picture. So Green Bay and Dallas. There they are at the top and then you've got this group of teams the Giants are leading the rest of the group as they trail Dallas in the East but they lead the wild card contenders and then the bad news for Detroit now is that as I said they're 0 and 4 against other teams that they're fighting with for a potential wild card spot and about to go to six and five passes behind Roy Williams incomplete. You know you're right Joe I, th I think that you know this obviously was a very important game for Detroit for a lot of reasons one because if they lost which it looks like they're going to do they will now have lost three games in a row and then as you said the games they've lost to some of the contenders as wild card teams and then you look at the schedule I mean Dallas San Diego Kansas City and then finishing up at Green Bay you know they could win all those games I mean we see that in the in the NFL but those are going to be tough games for this team to be able to pull that off. Kidna out of the shotgun. Throws penalty flag comes in as McDonald hops out of bounds. It was a 56 to 21 loss at Philly week three. 34 to three loss at Washington for Detroit. 31 21 loss at Arizona. Holding defense number 31 five yard penalty automatic first down. And then last week in a game that's still driving some of these Lions nuts, a 16 to 10 loss to the New York Giants. And you talk to these Detroit Lions players, and they'll tell you almost to a man, we really blew opportunities to win that game. And, and then to go back to, to Green Bay, you know, who would have thought that this game next Thursday would be for, in all likelihood, for home field advantage throughout the playoffs? And, and then also a game that most of the country is not even going to get an opportunity to watch. Yeah, it is on the NFL Network on Thursday. First down with a minute 28 to go. Over the middle, incomplete. I used to joke that the Dallas Cowboys are so good they belong in the AFC. But I'm not so sure anymore that you just hands down say 
that the Dallas Cowboys are the best in the NFC. You could certainly make the case. But with what these guys and Favre is doing and the experience of Brett Favre at that position compared to Romo who's never won a playoff game. I'm not so sure anymore. Here is Kaysen out of the backfield penalty flag again on the play and Kaysen is to the 49 of Green Bay. Joe I agree with you completely. I know a few weeks ago I mean I, I really have felt throughout the season that the Dallas has been in a class of their own in the NFC the way that they have played and there's holding offense number 51 10 yard penalty second down. There's still nothing that I've seen from Dallas to suggest that they're not a great team and 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 that they very well could be the class of the NFC. But I guess the reason that I hedge that a little bit is as you said I mean Green Bay here over the last three to four ball games, in my opinion has really come along and and is just playing a lot better than what I saw of them earlier in the year when they were winning games. Now they're starting to dominate people which is what you want to see That game Thursday I think it's going to be terrific. Kitten is going to go down again and it's the play of that group up front this time it's Corey Williams. But my gosh they are good up front. They've got good corners. They're getting good play out of the safety position. The linebackers are Fox Sports poll question who will win this year's galloping gobbler. Surprise Brett Favre at 70 <laughs> percent. That's who you want to see win it and if he's willing if he's willing we'll present it to him at the end of this game. A screen.